Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today we're going to continue with our explanations of chapters from business management. Today it's chapter 4.5, which are the four P's. Uh, as promised, I'm going to do this chapter in four parts. I'm going to do one part for each uh, section because I think that's just the simplest way to do it. That each section is is a bit um, is a bit dense and requires a good amount of explanation. So putting it all together would be a lot, but I think each on its own should be quite understandable. So uh, for this chapter, we're going to be talking about, for this section, we're going to be doing uh, 4.5a, which is product, all right? This is the first of the four Ps. So product, what is a product, all right? A product is a good or service that satisfies the needs or wants of customers. This can either be tangible, which is a physical good, or intangible, such as a service. Um and basically, for a product to be successful, it has to offer some kind of added value. That being either functional, which means it's useful, it's practical for uh, for the customer, or emotional, as that it, it appeals to the emotion of the customer. It instills pride or happiness. This could be like a show, for instance, that you're not going to get practical value from watching a TV show, but you will enjoy it. It will create happiness. Um, something functional would be, you know, a screwdriver. You get practical use from a screwdriver. Um, and so then we have the types of products. Products come in various types. Um, there's two types, really. Consumer and producer. Consumer means you're selling directly to consumers. Producer means they're goods that are purchased by another business for their production process. Those would be things like natural resources. So producer, that's really all it is. Consumer, there's a bit more that we should dig into here. So consumer is kind of divided into five more, or really four more main subcategories, all right? Uh, first, there's fast moving consumer goods or FMCGs. Um, these are ones, these are goods that have a short shelf life and you sell them in high qualities for sheep. So for instance, imagine cans of Coke. You're selling them very quickly for not very much money. Then you have consumer perishables. These are ones that have a limited shelf life and they're more expensive because you're selling a, a smaller volume of them. So you're, you're aiming to sell fewer, but more for more money. So you're getting more value from each purchase. Uh, then consumer durables. These are ones that are expensive, less units sold, and have a longer shelf life. All right. Then you have specialty goods. Those are like luxury goods, you know, Rolex watches and that kind of thing. Um, and then we have the final kind of distinction here. So we've done the four main ones. The final distinction, the like fifth, is low and high involvement products. That's involvement means uh, how hard is it for a customer to come to the decision to buy your product or not. Low involvement means it's very easy for the customer they're not going to be making a lot of you know decisions or whatever. They're coming in and they know I'm going to get this product. High involvement means they have to do a bit more decision making. Um, all right, so we've covered that part. Then we have product life cycle. All right, and how marketing and your marketing makes changes throughout the cycle. Because remember, the overall unit we're talking about with all this is marketing. So we're really when we're coming back to all this, we have to be thinking how is all this influencing our marketing. So in this case, um, the process of the the parts of our product's uh, life cycle are first research and development, then the launch, introduction, growth, maturity slash saturation, decline, and, and that's it. Sorry, there's another bullet point here, but that's for the next part. Um, so those are the parts. Research and development, launch, introduction, growth, maturity, saturation, and decline. This means you start with your research, you then you launch, you launch your, your product, you get it on the market, it's growing up, it reaches its kind of peak point, and then it peters off. Um, now, there are strategies you can use to extend the life of a product. This is where marketing comes in. Things like price reductions. You can get a product that isn't very high demand. Maybe it's in decline, but you can get people to come back to it by reducing the price, such as iPhones, right? Like iPhone, you know, the current iPhone 13, for instance. There were some people that didn't buy it at first because, you know, a $1,000 phone is expensive. But once you lower the price to 500, well, then there are some people that will come back and say, oh, I'll come a year later and then buy it. There are actually many shoppers who shop in that way with things like iPhones. Uh, later, redesign. So this means adding, you know, special features, limited edition, repackaging or repacking, uh, which is would be like adding new colors or new materials, uh, trying to open into new markets, market development, uh, or some kind of promotion. All right, having more promotion. Uh, this is, you know, these are ways to extend the life cycle of a product. All right, and then we get into what is known as the Boston Consulting Group Matrix or the BCG Matrix. This is a planning tool that classifies uh, your portfolio of products in a market. 
uh, based on their market share and market growth. So this is we're getting into more elaborate analysis of of products, all right, and how they are in terms of just the process of existence, all right. So we have a chart here that we make, a chart that is with two axes. Axis one, the vertical axis, is market growth. Horizontal one is the market share, all right. So you have products that are either low market growth or high market growth and low market share versus high market share. The market growth means, is it in a market that is either growing or stagnant or shrinking? And then market share or market share, this is we've discussed on, you know, before, this is what percentage of the market does this specific, um, the specific item occupy, all right? So on the low end, so low market share and a low mo market growth, these are called dogs. This means that they're weak in the market and it's not a market that's growing because there's few opportunities uh, for anything to do with this. This is what you want to avoid. You want to avoid dogs um, because, you know, this, and we're just talking in the in the marketing context. Dogs are lovely. But in the marketing context, dogs are a bad thing because the product that is not having market success, it's not good in a market and you can't find a way to grow with it because the market's not growing. It's a stagnant market. This would be like, I don't know, let's say the, the market of beds and you're a small bed maker. It's a bit hard to expand because the bed market's very stable. There's not, you know, any kind of growth there. That's maybe a weird example, but you guys understand me. Then low market share in a high growth market. What happens? You have what we call a question mark. This is something where there's potential, but you have to decide whether or not to invest because there's a market. There's definitely a market. This market's growing up. This would be like in the mobile phone market. The mobile phone market is really growing, but then you're sitting there like, all right, well, do I invest? I make a risk because I'm not a large portion of this market. So I have to really work hard to become a large portion of this market. Do I invest or do I not invest? That's kind of the difficulty. All right. So that's where you have a question mark. That's something with potential. You can really see opportunities, but at the moment, it's not successful. It has to be nurtured a bit to get to be successful. Then you have cash cows. Cash cows is when you have a high market share, but it's a low growth market. This is seen as a very stable product. It's something that's doing well, but it's not going to grow. It's not going to go anywhere. This might be like Coke, right? Because Coke is, is very stable, very comfortable, but it's not like the soda market's going anywhere. So they're just, they're selling to their constant thing. They're making a good a good buck from it and that's it. Um, and then the final one, this this is the, the ideal, which is a high market share in a high growth market. These are known as stars. This just means you're doing great. You're growing you're selling and there's more opportunities to keep growing and keep selling. So those are the categories, dogs, uh, question marks, cash cows, and stars. Stars is the ideal, doing great, high market share and a high market cash cows is stable. So in a low growth market, you have a high share. Um, question marks is you're in a high, in a high growth market, but you have a low share. And then finally dogs, which is low market share, not growing market. Um, so basically in a strategic exit, uh, strategic analysis, sorry, with each of these things, you have to kind of decide your behavior based on them, all right? So building, for instance, building would be trying to support problem childs, trying to support things like the dogs to try and maybe grow the market share. Uh, holding, this is trying to maintain your position. Milking is using cash cows and divesting is getting rid of dogs. So these are different strategies you have with the business to try and take advantage of products that are in different areas, okay? And a business generally should have a balanced portfolio and have things in all of the four all of the four quadrants of of this this graph. And you can see here, if you guys want a more visual example, I, I drew a little graph in my notes. So there you go. You can also look up. Uh, I don't know if you guys can read it. it Might have been covering part of it. But if you guys also want to, you can look it up. Sometimes they, they structure the graphs a bit differently uh, than the one I drew here, but it's the, all the same ideas. Um, all right. And then we have branding. Branding, all right? Branding is based on awareness, development, preference, loyalty, and value. These are all basically branding strategies that you can use. Value is, value is the final one. It means the premium that you get as a brand for being recognized, that people are going to come to you because you're a respected brand. Uh, anyway, branding is very important when it comes to a product. Having a good brand for a product means you can keep its market value high. Um, all right. And the final one is the packaging, right? Packaging for a product. This is how you protect it. 
but also it's the attraction, the promotion, the differentiation, because the way you package a product, for instance, if you're going to buy a candy bar, would you prefer a Snickers, which has this nice logo? You see the image of the Snickers on it. You see the name of Snickers. It's got the, the iconic colors, the blue, the brown, the red, the white, right? And you, you see, you know, the image of the nuts and the chocolate. Would you rather buy that or a candy bar that's just a white package and in Times New Roman size 14 font printed the words candy bar in black lettering? You know, that's, that's an example of, you know, which one attracts you more to buy that candy bar, right? So that's how packaging, and also it's protective. I mean, it's like a practical purpose. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the first P. I am going to, in the next few minutes, publish the rest of the videos for the other P's because they're also very uh, close, relevant, and related. Um, so you guys can get prepared for those. They'll be coming very shortly. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, do leave them down below. And... That's all. Thank you for watching and best of luck with the rest of your studies. See y'all later.